Welcome to New Realities. My name is Alan Steinfeld and I'm very happy to have tonight someone I feel is a real spokesman for New Realities. And his new book is a breakthrough into that consciousness. It's called Reinventing the Body, Resurrecting the Soul. Tonight's guest is Deepak Chopra. And in this, he describes a paradigm in which we can take consciousness and apply it to the body. It's a very important move in bridging the world of science and the world of spirituality. So talk about um, how you see them coming together for the mainstream public. Well, the idea of the book came to me a while ago when I started looking at research on what is called neuroplasticity, how our perceptions, how our thoughts, how our feelings, emotions, dreams, even imagination, meditation, reflection, contemplation, they actually change the anatomy of the brain. So you can grow your brain, literally, in size. You can also uh, create new neuronal networks. You can create new nerve cells, neurogenesis. So when I was looking at that and saw the interface between consciousness, which is invisible, and structure, which is visible in the brain. But then I came across more research that showed that approximately 500 genes that influence things like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, inflammation, even cancer can change as a result of lifestyle. So if you go on a good diet, if you manage your stress, if you meditate, if you exercise, your genes get upregulated. means the good genes get turned on and the bad genes get turned off. And then I saw the connection between neurogenesis and gene modulation because you cannot change the structure of the brain unless you create new peptides, new proteins, and new tracts and that can only happen if you influence your genes because to create new proteins you need a process called transcription and translation which happens at the genetic level. So I suddenly saw the connection between consciousness, genes which are literally you know, what your genes, I realized, are uh, quantum computers mm. because they compute all the activity that's happening at the cellular level. And then I saw the connection between that and the brain. And it suddenly occurred to me we were thinking the wrong way, that we thought of genes and the nervous system as structures when, in fact, they were processes. Mm. And then, in fact, the whole body, which is an expression of your genes, after all, you start out with one mm -hmm. double-stranded DNA, which makes your whole body, that we're thinking of the whole body as a, in the wrong way. Your body is not a structure that exists in space-time. Mm -hmm. Your body is a process in space-time, but space-time energy information and your body are all created in consciousness. So you create your body. But this has implications then because what I'm getting is the whole idea of inherited genes, inherited disease is, is not true in the old paradigm in the sense that we can affect our genes. So it's not that we are genetically prone to something, it's the attitudes and thoughts. So how do you feel about that? Because it changes what we know about medicine. We are looking at a lot of genes that are very fluid and very malleable. I think of genes as the record, is a karmic record, both of your personal experiences of life and also as a karmic record of the experiences of your ancestors, both human and animal and ultimately microbial. And I think most genes are totally fluid. Now you say, well, if somebody has a gene for Huntington's chorea, mm. that can you change that through consciousness? At the moment, I don't have the information on that. At the moment, it seems like there are certain genes that are seemingly fixed. Mm -hmm. But the majority of genes, you know, 80% of genes, 80% uh, of disease boils down to heart disease, cardiovascular illness, diabetes, obesity, inflammation. These are under your influence. So it's like we're not driving our bodies in the correct way. We're not in touch with it. We're not, what you say, the soul or consciousness is very much a part of how we're tuning into the body. And and I love this body, you know, I feel so grateful and happy and I want to take care of that. And um, but it's the first you know, thing to realize is that your soul is not in your body, okay? Yeah, your body is in your soul. Your soul is not in your mind, your mind is in your soul. 
This world is in your soul. But you have to describe soul. Okay. You have to define soul. Soul is core consciousness which exists outside of space-time. So when people look for the soul in the body and in the brain, they can't find it because it's not there. You see, it's the other way around. Where do you experience your body? In your consciousness, right? Where do you think about, about your brain? In your consciousness. When you look at a brain, where is it? In your consciousness. There is no experience outside of consciousness and that is what your soul is. It's part of a matrix of collective soul and universal soul which we call God. But the reason you can't find your soul is you're looking in the wrong place. Mm. You're looking in space-time to something that isn't in space-time but creates space-time. Where do you experience space? In your consciousness. Mm. Where do you experience time? Has anyone seen time? So it's in your all an aspect of our, even our body then is an aspect of the consciousness. And you talk yeah. about... And don't point here when you say consciousness. Okay? <laughs> because consciousness is not here. Consciousness is transcendent. It's a field of possibilities that exists outside of space-time. It's a field of correlation. It's a field of creativity. It's a field of intentionality. Everything that makes us human, insight, intuition, creativity, imagination, conscious choice making, these are qualities of the soul as our love, as our compassion, as our kindness, as our peace of mind. But does the soul hold the perfect blueprint for the body? The soul indeed has the perfect blueprint, or the soul can also have wounds. Mm. karmic wounds mm. from trauma from other lifetimes mm -hmm. so not that these wounds are not repairable but in order to repair them you have to get in touch with your soul if you want to change mm -hmm. your genetic structure mm -hmm. if you want to change your relationship to time mm -hmm. if you want to bring about healing mm -hmm. you know I'm now thinking of healing as biological creativity mm -hmm. that can only come from the level of the soul Biological creativity, yes. because you talk about creativity. So couldn't consciousness totally correct the body in the moment? Isn't this what you're getting? Many times, this radical mutation in consciousness will cause a radical mutation in the physical body. physical body is a projection of This guy, Robert Young, had a near-death experience. He came back from that place and mm. he was able, his leg was shriveled up from this accident and he was able in, in five minutes to grow his leg back to normal. See, the more we document things mm -hmm. like that, the more we can replicate things like that, the more our paradigm will shift. Only 10 years ago, we were saying the brain is fixed, mm. genes are fixed. Turns out they're not. How is this new paradigm going to affect medicine as we know it? I think the next phase of medicine has to be a true understanding of consciousness and how consciousness conceives, constructs, creates and governs our biology. But you know, you still throw out the word consciousness. People like Richard Dawkins, they don't have a framework for understand. I understand it because I know I've been the observer of my thoughts. These scientists, you have to talk to them in a way where they could understand what that word means. Well, I have to say, Richard Dawkins has impeccable credentials, mm -hmm. but his worldview is mechanistic, mm -hmm. Newtonian, outmoded, and obsolete. So what can I say? I mean, people like him may probably never get it. In Robert Kuhn's book about the scientific revolutions, he said it's the anomalies that have to be included in the greater paradigm. So these anomalies of spontaneous healing, what other anomalies that you mentioned in your book are you excited well, about? Well, we can start looking at anomalies as having mechanisms because no matter how infrequent something is, if it happens, then there has to be a mechanism. Mm -hmm. And as scientists, it behooves us to try and understand the mechanism. The Institute of Noetic Sciences mm -hmm. of a few years ago published about 3,700 cases of spontaneous remission in almost every disease. So once we begin to understand the mechanism, and I believe that the mechanism is biological creativity, you break out of a statistical probability pattern Mm -hmm. because your biology does something totally unpredictable and that's a quantum leap in consciousness that causes a quantum leap in the behavior of your biology. But we have to have the paradigm in place so people can accept these leaps of creativity. And the paradigm, the theoretical paradigm is 
that consciousness is not an epiphenomenon. Mm-hmm. Consciousness is the ground of existence that differentiates simultaneously into energy, into information, into space-time, and into the world of objects, which includes biological organisms. And that biological organisms are exact examples of all the properties of consciousness, because biological organisms start out as pluripotential cells, mm-hmm. or what we call a stem cell. You know, one cell divides 50 times to create 100 million cells, which is more than all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. This process of morphogenesis and differentiation, how that one cell becomes the 100 trillion cells, happens through non-local correlation, which would be you know, the mystical term for ha- that. Wait, explain. It happens through non-local mm-hmm. means it happens... Um, all at once. All at once. Without these cells sending messages to each other or trying to regulate each other through exchange of information. Right, the way energy. birds fly and they all turn at once. Synchronicity, yes. 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 But morphogenesis and differentiation is much more complicated than birds flying. Eye cells, neurons, hair follicles, skin cells, genetic cells, all differentiating all at the same time and yet keeping track of each other without sending each other any information or energy so this, signal. It goes it's into the field. omniscience, it's, it's omnipresence, and it's omnipotence. If this is part of what Lynn McTagg and Rupert Sheldrake are talking about, the field phenomenon. It is a field phenomenon. So we yes. have to recognize that as a key part of biology, you're saying. Yes, the field phenomenon, that's one. Recognize as a, a key, and that each cell is pluripotential. The research is showing us that. But then there are other aspects of consciousness non-local correlation we mentioned, uncertainty, because biological systems are not fixed. Mm -hmm. And thank God they're not fixed because that's where creativity comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, change comes in. That's where you break out of the statistical prognostic pattern. And then, of course, consciousness has intentionality. And the more we understand consciousness, the more biologists understand consciousness, the few that do, they are reverting to what was called the Lamarckian view or the right. teleological view that intention orchestrates biological function. Right. And that's very important when it comes to healing. So this has so much uh, power for people who know that they can heal themselves. I think the five breakthroughs I mentioned for the body, yeah. that first of all, your body is not a structure, it's a process. Mm-hmm. Secondly, it's an information and energy field. Thirdly, that awareness is the key to transformation. Fourthly, you can change your genes and your nervous system. And fifthly, in every moment, you can change your relationship with time. Because time is this abstract phenomenon that uh, that is experienced in consciousness that actually influences your biological clock. Mm. So we have to understand what is the mechanism through which we metabolize the experience of time. And what is that mechanism? It is how the observer and the observed separate themselves and the observer measures experience. Time is the continuity of memory using the ego as an internal reference point. To the extent you can break the barrier of the ego, you break the barrier of ego. And to the extent you can establish a relationship with the timeless in the midst of the time bound, you influence your biological clock. So I think you said time is the observer's relationship to the observed. And in fact, in the deeper reality, the observer and observed are the same being. Mm -hmm. And when you get, you know, when when spiritual tradition we call that love, when you get to that level of unity consciousness, there's no time. There's no time, there's there's no you, and there's no me. And if we can take that awareness into the body, then it lights up ourselves. Absolutely. In fact, if you can have your attention on the timeless, even in the midst of time-bound experience, you will, first of all, feel free, and secondly, you'll change your body. You will nurture your light body. You know, spiritual traditions Mm -hmm. talk about astral body, Mm -hmm. subtle body, causal body. Now we can understand these levels as information and energy, Mm -hmm. and in fact, as photons, which are the carriers of information and energy, which permeate the whole universe. And so, when we bring that all all that awareness into one point, we reach a level of enlightenment. And when that happens, we are in the timeless place. Yeah, and at that point, you resurrect your soul, and your soul gives you a life of uh, joy, effortless spontaneity, love, compassion, kindness, peace, equanimity, joy at the success of others, 
which the Buddhists call divine qualities. At that level, you have unlimited imagination and creativity. At that level, you always choose evolution over entropy. And at that level, you're literally free. To be enlightened means to be in the light. And that, literally. you can actually turn this body into light. This, and this is what the great masses that's, have That's done. the goal. And that should be our goal. Nothing short of enlightenment. The physical body is just the epiphenomenon. And then we get of off the wheel of reincarnation. And ultimately, we that's the goal. So then there's life throughout the universe as well, isn't there? Because if consciousness exists, then... If it's not here, it's nowhere. If it's here, it's everywhere, ah. as the Vedanta says. I love that. Thank you for this time, Thanks, because I, this is going to help yeah. so many people. This book, Deepak Chopra's new book, Reinventing the Body, Resurrecting the Soul, very important, a breakthrough for mainstream. For me as well. And for you as well. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. this time.